Hi, this is Graham from Genoms Astro. In this video, I'm going to be comparing two simple beginner's telescopes, one old and one new. We're going to look at the Edmund Astroscan and the Skywatcher 130P Heritage, which is also sold as the AWB One Sky. We're going to compare their specs, look at their design features, and then compare how they perform optically. What are they like to look through and use as telescopes? If you think that might be of interest and you haven't subscribed to Genoms Astro already, then please click the button and let's get started. Okay, so what about their specs? Well, perhaps we'll start with the similarities. They are both Newtonian telescopes and they both have parabolic mirrors. Beyond that, there isn't really much in common between these two scopes. So if we look at the aperture, starting with the Astroscan, it has a 105 millimeter diameter mirror, four and an eighth of an inch. Hopefully you can see it there, whereas as you might expect from the name, the 130p or One Sky has 130 millimeters, 5.1 inch diameter mirror. So straight away, you might cry foul and say, this is a bigger scope, it's not a fair comparison. And yeah, there's a little bit of truth in that, but they are both simple beginner scopes from different times. So I think we'll carry on with the comparison. I hope that's okay with you. So keeping with the optical side, this one, the Astroscan, is a ratio, focal ratio of f4.2, whereas this one is a little bit slower at f5. And basically, if you do the maths, uh, you can figure out that that's going to translate into quite a difference in uh, the focal length between the two scopes. So this one, 445 millimeters, whereas this one is 650. Well, you, they look about the same size. Well, obviously, there's there's some extra focal length hiding somewhere, and that is achieved by the design of this one which has an extending tube which so that is why basically when you have them like this in there in, in the positions that you use them the 130p is quite a lot a larger scope that translates into weight as well so the astroscan on its base uh, weighs about 10 pounds uh, about four and a half kilos whereas the 130p one sky it weighs 14 pounds or about 6.2 kilos. So carrying this one around compared to this one, this comes with a nice carry strap. This one has, has a handle, uh, but certainly it is quite a lot uh, heavier in, uh, in use, but absolutely no problem to actually move it around your garden. It's just a bit of bulkier scope. What about production dates? Well, this one was introduced first in 1976 and it stayed in production until uh, I think 2013, at which point the mold that was used in the factory to make this ABS uh, body, which we'll come back to, the shape here, that's so characteristic of the Astroscan, that mold broke. And it wasn't worth starting production, making a new mold. So that brought the end of the, of the Astroscan in, in 2013. It had gone through a couple of iterations, but we'll, we'll come back to those uh, in a minute. Whereas this scope, the 130p, is a current model. It was first introduced in 2009, and you can still buy it today in uh, its two flavors, at least two flavors, um, in terms of Skywatcher or AWB One Sky. And finally, what about the cost? Well, the Astroscan first cost $150 in the 70s, but over time, production costs rose, and in, in, by the mid-90s, these were selling for, I think, about $330. So over the, over the production run, they doubled in price. Obviously, it's 40 years, but they went from, let's say, $150 up to closer to $350. This scope, um, we've well, probably seen on my channel. I made a series of videos about this scope a few years ago because I think it's such a good beginner scope. And back then, the series talked about it costing £150 or $200. Well, inflation has taken effect since then. So now currently in, in the UK, it's around 200 pounds to buy, or let's say $250. So <clears throat> I think if you make that overall comparison at the end of, their, of this one's production with uh, the current cost of this one, you can see that this is a really good value product. And we'll come on to look at how, how good it is. Uh, I already like this scope very much. I've had it for a while and used it a lot, but yeah, cost ultimately didn't favor the Astroscan. So let's look at a few design features between these two scopes, starting for no particular reason with the finder scope. Well, the Astroscan doesn't really have a finder scope. It has this 
bracket instead, which is bolted onto the side of the tube, is somewhat prone to rotating like that, um, or you could say you could adjust it that way, but ultimately what you do is you line it up by sight until these two holes are um, coincident with the, with the part of the night sky that you're trying to look at. Now, I'd say I find this very awkward to use, um, primarily because you need to have the scope up fairly high in order that you can actually look along that line of sight, um, and because it doesn't stay lined up with the tube. So as a finder scope, I'd have to give it maybe one or two out of 10. Whereas on the 130p, you've got a plastic red dot finder here which I know a lot of people don't like red top finders. They say that they're inferior to optical finders. Personally, I don't really agree with that. I think they are great devices. As long as you've got them lined up well with the tube of the telescope, then I think they're really good. So it's a red dot finder, much easier to find objects um, using one of those than using the, the sighting bracket arrangement here on the AstroScan. Moving on to the focusers, the AstroScan looks to have a conventional rack and pinion focuser. You rotate the knob and the focusing tube moves in and out like so. But if you carry on extending the, the focuser tube like this, and you, it'll just fall out in your hand, well that's fine. If you have a look inside, hopefully, if I turn the camera around, you might be able to see inside there's a rubber piece of rubber here that is rolling on that focusing uh, on the shaft between these two focusing knobs and that is just applying friction to move the um, focus tube in and out so pretty unconventional it does actually work reasonably well whereas probably my least favorite feature of the 130 it's got a helical focuser which basically means it focuses by uh, turning it like this and you can see as we do that it moves in and out you can also see I've got a bit, little bit of plumber's tape on here, which is just to, trying to take some of the play of the mechanism out. So I don't really like it, but it does work. In fact, both of these slightly strange focus mechanisms work quite well. So I'd definitely say even points in that regard. This, I guess the perhaps another noticeable difference is that the, the focus of tube on the AstroScan just uses this little friction clip to hold your eyepiece in. Um, it doesn't have a screw, somewhat more conventional like you have here to secure your eyepiece. So again, a feature I've seen on some, some old telescopes, it does work, you just gotta be a little bit careful that your eyepiece doesn't fall out. So how about the optical tube design? Well, the AstroScan is famous for looking like this. It is designed with this spherical hard plastic, ABS plastic ball that rotates and moves around in this aluminium cradle mount. And it's really well balanced, just the right combination of friction so that you can point it and it stays where it's pointed. So a unique design really, it was patented at the time and makes this a scope that people are drawn to because it's, it just looks strange, it looks crazy, but I think if you don't think it's attractive as a telescope, well maybe, Perhaps you should uh, go and have a, a, a talk to yourself because I think it is still 40 years on or more a, a fantastic piece of design. Whereas the 130p is really all about business. Um, perhaps doesn't stir the heart in the same way, but it has some clever features as we've seen. It is made more portable and smaller to store by having this flex tube arrangement and it works very well. These these uh, extending tubes are really rigid. You might think that they, they're, they're gonna give you issues with stability or, or alignment, but I've found that it is a really good design. And you see this on, on, on the bigger um, flex tube Dorsonians from Skywatchers. So you, you will have seen also, probably if you looked at my uh, earlier videos on this scope, that I often use it with a light shroud in this position here, just to cut down on, on, on light getting into the optical arrangement from the side. But if you don't do that, this is how it comes when you buy it, and a sliding tube. So chalk and cheese here, really. So if we compare the two mounts, well, the AstroScan, this distinctive tube sits into 
this unit here, which is an aluminium cradle, which if I pick it up, very lightweight, has some pads just to uh, give it a little bit of friction so you move the tube around easily. Has a tripod thread going through the middle. So you can use it to secure the optical tube in an upright position, mating with this thread in the bottom of the tube. Combination of these two, I think it really is genius. Very lightweight, very intuitive to use, and very robust. Uh, after all these years, these tubes are really tough, and obviously the mounting is lightweight but strong as well. Compare that to the 130P, it's basically a Dobsonian with a flex tube. So it's got a conventional uh, fiberboard mount with a carrying handle. It's got a good control of, of friction. It's not too, not, not too loose, not too stiff to move around. And um, what other features? Well, perhaps one of the key features is that you can take this, this scope, the 130P, has got a Vixen dovetail on, on the side of the tube. So you can take it off the mount easily and put this onto another of your um, mounts. So that's really useful if you want to use this scope on an equatorial, for example, if you want to do any any kind of photography that isn't sort of just point and shoot, then that's really a useful feature that you can detach the optical tube. Whereas you can't really do that with, with the AstroScan. The idea is it's a simple device. You look through it, probably not set up for photography as we'll see, I think, in a, in a while, but it is what it is. It doesn't have that flexibility of being able to remove the uh, tube and attach it easily. When, when, you, when these things were new, there was an option, to be fair to it, there was an option to attach a tripod bracket which screwed into the, some of the existing holes in the tube and, and did allow you to mount it more securely on a tripod, but certainly not as flexible uh, as having a dovetail mount. So let's move on to the secondary mirrors. Um, they are basically the same. So hopefully if you look inside the tube of the Astro Scanner here, you can see the mirror, if I move it side to side, it's basically attached to this plastic window over the front of the tube. And I think there's, it looks like there's some plastic that's holding it in place, uh, probably some probably adhesive, but a conventional secondary mirror uh, has the advantage obviously having this plastic window that you don't have any, any, any forks uh, protruding into the light path. Whereas the 130P has a single uh, attachment fork for the for the secondary, which actually is, is very robust, certainly strong enough to hold it in place. Um, so even though they look, again, very different in this respect, they've both got conventional secondaries. But the obvious other difference that does come to light when you're looking at the secondary is that this one, the 130P, has a option to collimate the secondary. It's got these screws here, collimation screws, whereas the AstroScan Note collimated the factory forever what it is. Now, again, people talk about these things never being in collimation, um, being almost a feature. Uh, and yeah, I'd say, obviously, if, if yours has got bad collimation, there's very little you can do about it, short of major dismantling of the scope. Whereas the 130P, completely conventional adjustment. And also on the back of the primary scope, you can see the the back of the back of the primary mirror rather you can see the collimation knobs on that so that is a completely standard uh, newtonian collimation mechanism whereas yeah the astro scan if it's a good one it's probably going to stay a good one if it's not you're probably out of luck so what can you see with these two telescopes well I've plugged in the numbers into the astronomy tools website to get an idea of the field of view if you assume a 28mm eyepiece, which is basically the focal length of the one provided with the AstroScan, then you get around about a 3 degree field with the AstroScan at a nice low power of 16 times. That compares with round about 2 degrees with the 130p One Sky Scope. I tried this out by putting my smartphone looking into one of those eyepieces and you can see in, in the AstroScan that the moon does fit basically comfortably within the field of view and seems to match the calculation from the astronomy tools. I tried to put a digital SLR into both telescopes and probably not a surprise, you can't reach focus. So then I ended up going to one of my ZWO uh, cameras, the 224MC, to get a closer view of the moon. 
And in this configuration, I'm obviously looking at just the central part of the field. And in this case, this is the Astroscan. I could just fit the moon onto the sensor chip. And I think it was a pretty good view. I uh, just watched the moon traverse the field of view. I could get a good focus and it looked like the disc was in focus across the whole of the moon. If you compare that to the field with the 130p, obviously the image scale is quite a lot different. I would say this is a sign though that the 130p is sharper. Whilst the Astroscan gave a pleasing view, there seemed to be better contrast and a sharper image with the 130p. Probably not a great surprise with the larger aperture. I like to show images in these videos rather than just describe what it's like to look through these scopes. So I've tried to do that with Venus. It's a little bit tricky, but nonetheless, I've managed to capture a crescent from each of the scopes. And I was surprised the Astroscan let me go up to 100 times and still gave me a nice image. In general, you can see good views with these scopes as long as you stay away from the edge of the field of view where coma is present, as you would expect, given that they are Newtonians. So who's the winner of this competition? Well, it's not really that straightforward. I'd say almost 50 years ago, Edmund got a lot of things right when they designed this scope. And really, it's still great fun to use, great fun to look at. And if you use it perhaps for what is best, that is to say low power views, simple astronomy, then it really is still a great scope. You have to forgive it, it's optical imperfections. It can give you some really nice low power views. Fast forward to today, the 130p really remains high on my recommendation list to people who are getting into astronomy. It does pretty well everything well. Good image quality, you can put it onto another mount, takes magnification well. Obviously it has a little bit more aperture, but it's a really flexible scope that I think is good value. So whilst I love the Astroscan, I think this is the one. The 130p One Sky is the one you'd get if they were both lined up in a shop today, based on which is the best telescope to use and what you can see. Okay, hope it's been useful. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then please click the button and look out for more videos from Genem's Astro. Bye for now.